Hey everybody and welcome back out to the Somerton Airport. I'm out here with my plane and I'll tell you what, I'm making some plans for this upcoming year, 2025. I'll tell you what, you're not gonna wanna miss any of these. But just to give you guys a follow up, as you know, I've been working on my instrument rating and there has been an update on that, which I'll take you back to a couple days ago. Today is gonna be an interesting day for me. I'm over here at the PSI laser grade test center, so that you can see right here, the little place at the Somerton Airport. And I'm gonna be taking my instrument written test today. A Little bit nervous, been studying it for it for a very long time, just to make sure I had everything dialed in. Can't film while I'm in there, obviously, so I'll check back with you guys after I take the test. All right, everybody, got it all done, passed. So now, all I gotta do Finished the last couple hours and scheduled my check ride. Did pretty good. All right, so as you can see, I actually have my uh, IFR written test completed. So that is one step closer to getting my instrument rating completed. So with that, I have to schedule my check ride. I've got about four or five hours left to fly under the hood before I have all of that completed. And we've got a plan to make that happen. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a DPE willing to go in 8 Lima November for the check ride. So I've actually worked with a friend of mine. He's got a PA-28-160 ready to go. So I'm gonna spend about two or three more hours flying in that plane to get the last few hours I need to take my check ride. Once that's done, I've got a bunch of trips planned out for me in this plane this upcoming year. But before I get to that, I've gotta thank the sponsor of this video, which is GRT. Avionics. GRT is an American-based company making highly capable avionic systems for guys like me and you who want the most capability that we can out of a plane, but we need to do it within our budget. So if that's where you guys are at, go to grtavionics.com and check out the offerings they have. All right, so what's the plan for this video? Mark from North American Aerospace reached out to me because he was developing new fairings for the 601 and it's for the 601 XL, the 650, and the 601 HDS. Now the fairing that he's developed actually closes up the rear portion, portion of the fuselage underneath the horizontal stabilizer. For any of you guys that have built one of these or flown one, you've realized that there's that big gap between the Launchron and the bottom of the horizontal stabilizer. Well that lets a lot of air leak through and diminishes performance slightly. So I talked to Mark and, he's, and he wanted me to take this up and do some testing. What he wanted, wanted me to check was, does, or what is the performance benefit from this? So according to him, we should see a improvement in handling characteristics and a slight decrease in stall speed. And we should also see a slight increase in cruise speed. So here's that product. It fills in here. You see it's a nice formed piece, comes all the way around and underneath all the way across. Now I've got this painted, got it installed, mainly so that we can jump out here this weekend and take this for a flight. Now today is New Year's Day, and because I painted these last night, they're still the paint's a little soft, so I'm not quite ready to go take it up and fly. So the plan is this weekend, I'm gonna take this up and we're gonna get some numbers. So speaking about numbers, we need to talk about what numbers this plane actually makes. So what I wanna look at is true airspeed. And the reason I want to look at true airspeed is because that's going to take into account differences in pressure, altitude, all kinds of factors and give me a number that is based on the true speed of the plane through the air. This plane right now, as it sits, if I'm at full power, which for me in cruise is 3,200 RPM, that gives me a true airspeed of approximately 107 knots. Now, one thing I want you guys to understand is I like to do all of my flying in knots. I know most guys in life sport fly in miles per hour, but when you start moving into instrument, knots makes a whole lot more sense because approach timing is based on knots. So if we see anything in cruise flight at over 109, which would be two knots faster, that is a definite improvement. So with that, let's jump to the flight we're gonna take this weekend.
Summerton Traffic Terminal, 8 Lima November, taking off runway 35, Summerton. Let's go. Obstacle. Everything's in the green. I'm not looks good. Summerton traffic's from Mount Olay. Remember, left crosswind departure to the north, Summerton. Oh, well, my rate of climb looks pretty good right now. Yuma Approach, experimental, Niner 1, 8, Lima, November. Experimental, 9, 1, 8, Lima, November, Yuma Approach, go ahead. Yeah, just uh, departed from Summerton, climbing through 1,500 for 4,000, just doing a local flight, looking for flight following. A 8 Lima November, squad 0420. 0420, 8 Lima November. Experimental, 8 Lima November, radar contact 6 miles west of UMA Airport, 1,800. Position checks, 8 Lima November. I'm shocked. Like normally, and I mean, we're we've got really good weather right now. It's actually fairly cold for out here, but right now I am climbing at between uh, 700 and 800 feet a minute with 14 gallons of gas on board. I'm leaned out to uh, right now. Just trim. Wanted me to trim more so it can get slower or it gets a little slower on the climb. But I'm leaned out to right at. Uh, about 11 and a half to 1 as I'm doing the climb, which is keeping about 13.50 on the uh, EGT. Yeah, no, I mean, if you look, I've been averaging like there's 800. You know, instantaneous, I mean, the 800. So I'd say we're averaging out about 700, 750 feet a minute climb. So that was awesome. All right, so as soon as we get into level, we'll be able to... Take a look at some of this stuff here. So, seems like I'm getting a little bit of climb improvement from these fairings to start with, which is nice. All right, so here we go. 112, now that is an improvement. So, looks like, like I said, I was looking for anything over 109. This thing right now, let me pull power back, I'm at 3300 RPM, so I wanna go back to my normal Adjust cruise RPM. Trim which is 3250. Back to 3250, we'll wait till we level off here. So it should be level off 4000 again. I'm using the autopilot, so not, none, nothing that I'm doing is affecting this other than sure I got everything trimmed correctly. So 3250 right there, we're gonna let this, we're gonna trim this thing out. Just. So right there, normally at this altitude, I'd be seeing uh, about 107, 108 knots true airspeed. And right now I'm bouncing between uh, 110 and 112. So that's telling me I'm getting about three to four knots cruise speed improvement just from having this little fairing that I put on there, which is amazing. So with that, like I said, I'm getting about 110 knots, so about three knots crew airspeed improvement with these fairings. That's, that's pretty impressive, to be honest with you. So I'm happy with that. So that's a great value, you know, buying something that simple that you can bolt on that you know, changes the performance of the airplane in a way that's actually a positive thing. So here I'm seeing, again, about three to four knots true airspeed improvement for something that didn't take me a lot of time and something that was really just a, a quick assembly, you know, quick fit up, trim, and uh, attach. So, I mean, that's the type of things that I really like. Things that are real simple and easy to do, but give a good performance benefit to the airplane. So 
Again, like I said, I'm really liking this, you know, 110 knots, true airspeed. Solid three knots better than what I was getting before, so I can't, I'm just happy with how well these, uh, these fairings, that, those two little fairings are doing. They really clean up the air right around the stabilizer and, and prevent a little bit of drag. Which gets me thinking, I mean, what else could I do to speed this plane up? What would wheel pants do? Got a set of wheel pants. Maybe I should try those next. Summer and traffic, experimental 8, Lima November, left base runway 35, full stop, Summerton. Summer in traffic, experimental 8, leave over, turning final, runway 35, full stop, summer time. Obstacle. Oh, buttery good. All right, let's head back to the hangar. We'll debrief uh, this little flight here. All right, everybody, so it is the next day and I'm out here kind of debriefing and thinking about everything that I saw in that flight. And the one thing I will t tell you for certain is that my cruise speed definitely had an increase. So what I saw from the flight was, um, I t like as I was explaining earlier, I typically see 105 to 107 knots true airspeed at 4,000 feet with the fuel load that I had on board. Now with this flight, I was seeing 111 to 113. So there was a definite improvement in the cruise speed at tr um, in true airspeed in cruise flight. The other thing I saw was a definite improvement in climb performance. It was right around 150 foot a minute on average increase in the climb performance, which was not something I was expecting, but it was kind of, it just kind of shocked me that I saw that much. And it's surprising that's all from this little fairing right here. So if you guys are wanting one, you can pick them up um, through the Kit Plane Enthusiast website, and that's Mark Penson Stabler's site. If you guys haven't, ch haven't checked him out, he is the Kit Plane Enthusiast also on YouTube. So go check him out. He's got fairings for the 601, also for the 700 or 750 series uh, Zenith aircraft. So I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to end this right here. If you guys uh, like what you're seeing, think about subscribing, liking, following along. And as always, get in the garage, get building, or if you got one of these, get in the air and get flying. And I'll see you guys next time.